This is One on One. We are honored to uh, welcome Mr. Larry Hazard Sr., Commissioner, New Jersey State Athletic Control Board in 2010. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, member of the Newark uh, Sports Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Good to see you, Larry. My pleasure. Nice to be on. You know, um, <clears throat> you're an icon in the uh, world of sports and boxing, and, and uh, I want to welcome you to, to our show. By the way, let's let people know, where were you born and raised? Newark. Newark. 15th Avenue, 15th and Mars Avenue. When did boxing come into your life? 1957. Because? Dr. Timothy Steele. Tim Steele opened up a small boxing gym in the Hayes Homes housing project on 17th Avenue. And, uh, you know, guys used to hang out on the corners, and boxing was a very popular sport, you know, in Newark. And there were quite a number of guys in the neighborhood who who boxed, and of course, there you are. Uh, yes, that's, that's you. It's me and Danny and Alvin Johnson and Freddie Johnson, Arthur Randolph. Why do you remember all those guys? Because <clears throat> these these were my brothers, man. You know, we we were these. You know, I was the youngest. I was the youngest guy in the club, so I was like the little you know little brother. And these were my big brothers. You know, mm -hmm. they took care of me, and um, we did a lot of things together. We shared a lot of. Uh, uh, things uh, together. We, we fought throughout the state of New Jersey. We won a lot of uh, amateur championships as a team. The Duke is AC. We were known throughout the state. Wow. Yes, that's 1960. Wow. Okay. 1960, I was 15 years old when that picture was taken. There's Dr. There's Tim Steele on wow. the end. He was like our father. He was our surrogate father. In boxing, you've been a commissioner. Yes. You've regulated boxing. Referee? Yes. You've boxed? Yes. You're close with Ali? Yes, very close. I say Muhammad Ali, you say? A beautiful man, beautiful, humanitarian. He was more than a boxer. You know, he was a special gift to the world that God gave us as a human being. There. What made him so special? Because, because he was who he was. I mean, you know, he... He exuded all of the qualities that uh, we would aspire to be as human beings. He was, was, a, was an athlete. Um, he had courage. He stood on his beliefs. And he just loved people, mm. you know. And, and he, he was just a great role model. And most people that saw him, they saw him as an athlete. Yeah. But those of us who really knew him, mm. we knew him for the great human being that he was. You know what's so interesting is you were actually in the movie Ali. Yes. What role? Well, I played um, another one of my role models, referee Zach Clayton. That's right. I played the role of Zach Clayton, who was the original referee in the Rumble in the Jungle. That's Ali is the, the major fight there. That's uh, Ali played by Will Smith. And that's uh, George Foreman on the canvas. So, 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 so that George Foreman fight, I don't want to get too much into detail here, but when you were watching that, this is after Ali loses to Joe Frazier, right? People are thinking Ali is never going to be the Ali again. They give him no chance to win against the powerful George Foreman. People were so afraid of George Foreman. Did you, knowing Ali, believe he had any chance to beat George Foreman. Yeah, I believe that he could win. I believe because, you know, Ali, Ali would mesmerize guys before they even got in the ring. This way? And, yeah, in mind, the head? In the head, plus he had the skills. And as you know, that's when he introduced the infamous or famous rope Ropa dope. dope. Yes. So he said, go ahead. He put his hands up. Yes. He said, yes. go ahead, hit me. Yes. And so while his hands were up, were most of the shots here because a lot of them looked like they were coming in. <laughs> so he withstood it. He withstood it, and George got tired, okay? And, and that was it. That's all she wrote. And uh, he came through. Yeah. As, as, uh, it was no big surprise to me. Wow. The other thing I know about you is you're an educator. You're an educator. Tell folks where you 
did your educating in the Newark Public Schools? Well, well, I started out at Arts High School as a mm. physical education and health teacher, coach, athletic director. Then uh, I got a quick promotion after a few years. I went to Westside High School as a vice principal. I stayed there for three, four years. Then they sent me to Broadway Junior High My School. My Junior High School. Yes. Broadway Junior Broadway High. Broadway Junior High School as a principal. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I originally started out, I wanted to go to law school. But when I started teaching, I just fell in love with those kids. Mm. And that, along with the fact that I started moving through the system so quickly, yeah. you know, by the time I got to Broadway Junior High School, my career as a referee was really blossoming. I was globetrotting all over the world. Right. I had been to Japan, Korea. I'd been all over. By the time I got to Broadway, and then Governor Tom Kane appointed me as the boxing commissioner. They had the whole thing, they regulated. The whole bill, the whole Before thing. I let you go, I want you to talk about your uh, philanthropic work. Talk about your, uh, the work you're doing to help kids. Sure. Combat. Well, Combat is a nonprofit organization that I started back in the early 90s. And um, I wanted to be like Tim Still was for me. And the only mechanism or the mechanism that I felt was best for me, what I knew, was boxing. Mm. But in addition to, to boxing, I felt that once I got kids' attention and I got them in the gym, then I would surround them with positive adults like I was surrounded with, positive men who wanted to make men out of youngsters. Mm. And that's what I did. That was my model. The Duke of AC was my model. And when I got those kids in there, you know, I got positive trainers. I got people in there mm. that really cared about youngsters. We brought in speakers. Sure. We brought in uh, people to teach them life skills, teach them stay away from gangs, you know. And one went to the Olympics. Oh, he's, he's, he's fighting on the 14th. As we speak Shakur. right now. Yes. As we, what's he's his name? Shakur Stevenson. What's that He'll feel be, like for you? No matter uh, what happens in these games, what's it like for you? Well, that's, that, you know, like they say, if you can just save one. <laughs> but Secure, see, Secure was this. His grandfather was one of our trainers, mm -hmm. Wally Moses. He brought the kid to the gym with him. He was only five years old. And he would bring him to the gym with him every day. And he would train along with the rest of the kids. And he was surrounded by all of these positive adults. Then his mother... He moved from Newark, I think, to Virginia. And he connected, wow. he connected with someone else, another positive adult who just instilled all of these yeah. great concepts into this young man. He's never been in trouble. And now here he is standing at the pinnacle of winning a gold medal, and we're all pulling for him. Larry Hazard, Sr., Commissioner of New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Thank you, Mr. Hazard. Appreciate it. You Thank honor you. us. My Stay pleasure. Stay right there. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, Qualcare Inc., NJIT, New Jersey Sharing Network, the law firm of Gibbons PC, and by Verizon. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.